So we've talked a bit about how you can um, integrate grazers into your system and some of the different ways that might look and um, be managed within your system. Um, how that can be used as a management technique, so it changes you know, the composition or the structure of your food forest and you know, doing it with a chicken tractor and uh, maintaining the complexity of your food forest or um, bringing them in to kind of simplify and, and manage the, the um, support species and the diversification of that food forest. Um, so the last two, the selection species and the commercial operation, they all kind of tie into these previous points too, but there's various um, ways you can kind of lay out your food forest system and think about the selection and placement of your species. So the first part really um, with the selection of species is that um, you want to do an analysis for your zone for what species will be most productive. So that will be dependent upon things like hours of frost. So if you're having more uh, t uh, subtropical temperature sensitive species, so like kiwi fruit is quite sensitive to spring frosts which will damage the flowers or um, a lot of citrus is quite vulnerable to frosts or um, avocado is too. So you wanna pick species that are um, going to perform the best in, in the, the kind of conditions. So if you're getting you know, big uh, winter frosts and snows and things, you wanna make sure that as a species it's deciduous, it will lose its leaves and not be um, badly affected by those um, winter conditions. Um, also, um, hours of sunshine is important. So that's um, degree, degree days. Um, so if you work out how many hours of sunshine and how many days there are with those hours of sunshine, it gives you the um, degree days. And that will, um, every tr tr um, fruiting species will have a certain number of degree days that it will produce good fruit over. So some like a stone fruit um, want a good, hot, dry summer with lots of sunshine, same with grapes, um, so kiwi fruit to produce a good crop. So if you're getting um, a more variable summer, so if there's a lot of cloud cover um, that doesn't create those kind of conditions, then um, alternative species like apples and pears are more resistant to that and will produce better in your particular conditions. So generally, you know, hours of frost and degree days are your main considerations, but also things like the drainage of soil, so if it becomes waterlogged in winter, which will kill off a lot of um, the fruit trees which are sensitive to waterlogging of the soil, um, and also you know just the conditions of the soil. So certain trees like the Mediterranean ones like quite dry, free draining soils, while others like around Europe and England like quite denser, clayier soils. Um, so they have different preferences for different types of soils. Um, but once you've got an idea about what species will produce well in your particular area, um, wind's another one I should mention too, you know, um, some will withstand wind buffeting better than others and, and particularly with damage to fruit and things, so you, you'll need to kind of consider that with um, wind screens and, and whether they are suitable to your site or, or the topography of your site. But anyway, once you've got an idea of the particular species that will suit your site, um, you've got to then think about the design and the layout of it. And I either go one of two ways. I go for um, a, a particular emphasis on a particular species. So if I'm interested in apples or figs or persimmons or whatever it may be, um, having your support species in support of that main production. So making sure that I can manage the growth of those support species with grazers or mowing, um, or if they're just low lying and they're just not going to really interfere with my harvesting of this, this main fruit, and the training of them so that I can um, harvest this main crop effectively, so other plants in support. Or if you're getting more complexity in the system, so um, that can be fine on a smaller scale, I think, for a for food production for your yourself or your family. 
um, having you know a smaller great variety in your orchard on a smaller scale you can kind of manage that and you can go through your orchard and pick out what is uh, productive at a particular point in time but on a commercial scale that gets uh, quite messy and hard to manage so our uh, complexity on a commercial scale um, I like the system where you um, in your complexity you are picking species that are commercially harvestable within a particular time of year so for example all those species you can harvest in, in January or all February or all March or all April um, and then uh, if you're harvesting in them yourself you're you're limited by a particular area in which you're harvesting the fruit or you can even get people to come in for a UPIC system and they can come through and and pick the fruit within that particular range at that particular time of year so it's a way of managing that complexity um, and concentrating that complexity on time of year um, and still have quite good um, variation and, and different layers in your um, orchard um, crop or you know go the other way um, as um, the trees become more mature you can um, manage the support species more severely, um, bring in grazers to help manage their regrowth and, and redirect more of the, the um, organic growth of that system into your main harvestable crops. Um, simplifying the system a little bit as it gains maturity and it, and it has a bigger root network and, and is able to uh, beneficially change the, the soil conditions more on its own accord. Um, but you know, having uh, still having that complexity in the system with the grazers and the support species to uh, you know support the health of that plant, making sure you know you're not getting too much towards a monoculture where um, you're going to get all, all those health problems uh, back again. So these are the two ways I generally go, and then when I map out the species, just thinking about you know, how I'm going to place that diversity. So where are my main productive species? Um, integrating maybe nitrogen fixating trees in between your productive species. You can use them to trellis vines over, or you can prune them back heavily to uh, mulch these productive species. And then what other kind of support productive species you want? You know, if you're going to uh, locate berries um, in the little nooks and crannies around these main production trees and have uh, ground covers or herbs um, spread around these trees to help outcompete the weeds and provide an alternative harvest um, for you. So yeah, kind of thinking about how I'm going to manage it with grazers, what kind of way I'm going to go, whether it's, it's a real focus system on a particular production or whether it's more complex but organized around time of year and then the design and the layout of those species. And then once you've got an image of that, so where, what species you're going to use, how you're going to manage it, um, looking at the layout of that design in your particular site. So um, looking at where your house zone is. Um, this is a zone two a permaculture orchard. So it's quite frequently used and frequently managed, so quite an intensive system. So you want to keep it quite close to the house. So you've got your zone one, which is your um, home orchard, your, your kitchen garden, I often call it. And then um, your zone two orchard is generally located around that. And then you've got to kind of think about um, how are you going to pattern your rows of trees within this orchard, or if you are going to have rows of trees, or if you're going to have a scattering of trees around it. Um, I, I quite like the rows of trees because you can um, organize the trees in, in compatible guilds, but you can integrate that quite well with grazing systems and they can move in between these rows of trees. Um, so these rows of trees help um, create structure to, to how these uh, grazers are going to move through this system. Um, but yeah, this, this kind of helped organize the productive species in a, in a close proximity so that they can you know, mutually benefit each other and changing the soil conditions in a way that they're all going to benefit from. 
so you can start thinking about you know where you're going to locate those different herbs and berries and nitrogen fixating trees and productive trees in that system you know whether that's going to be focused on pears or whether it's focused on apples or maybe both or figs or whatever it may be or you know whether you're going to be you know these are all your January ones your February ones your March or your April so thinking about how um, how are you going to structure the layout of that orchard, uh, position it in relationship to the, to the house for frequency of use? Or the, the road, you know, you might have some road access up here, so you want, you can, um, if it's a UPIC um, situation for example, there may be parking here and a little way station maybe which, which you can man when it's open and they can um, park in here. Um, harvest whichever rows available that particular year, um, yeah, particular time of year. You can weigh it and you can charge them on the weight of the fruit and, and they can leave. Or even just, you know, kind of accessing this orchard um, by road for, um, you know, harvest machinery. Um, you know, just thinking about the place, placement in relationship to infrastructure, housing, access, topography of the land. There may be um, you know, good wind protection. So in our area, for example, we've got northwesterly winds as our predominant wind. So there may be um, a good row, row of shelter trees here or it might slope up to the west and south and, and give you good protection from the winds from those areas. So you want to nestle your orchard in um, to the zone which is best protected by those, those natural wind breaks and natural topography. So it's starting to kind of um, make all the connections. So between the, the guild complexity, the, the grazing management, um, the type of production, um, its placement and relationship to the house and access and natural topography. Um, so yeah, so it's fitting all the pieces together. So kind of looking at each of the factors that influence production um, breaking it down, kind of analysing all the variables to it and, and then once you've got all those variables mapped out, how can you place things and interconnect things most beneficially, which will require often a little bit of um, you know, modification and placement um, and, and just kind of getting a sense of what works. And often, you know, and the, the benefit, I guess, of mapping it all out is you can you can come up with you know three or five different ideas of what could work. So you can go through all these different ideas mentally first before actually having to commit to doing it in real life and, and getting the financial cost of, of that. Um, so you can kind of mentally go through this process and you can pick out your, your best ideas. And you know there may be three ideas and you're not quite sure which one it is and you can trial them on a smaller scale. So maybe before you go all out and plant it on a big scale, you can trial um, small areas of your orchard with what you think will work. So trying different guilds of plants and different arrangements. And once you find one that does work really well, replicating that on a bigger scale. And then, you know, when you're replicating that guild of plants out on a bigger scale, again, the grazers, you might want to kind of think about um, different species and, and trialling them too. So, you know, trialling some sheep and trialling some geese or chickens and seeing which one works best for you in your context and, and which one um, has the best kind of um, interaction with your plants and, and you know, doesn't um, damage your productive species or the ones you're most interested in, but at the same time kind of helps control the regrowth of the, the support species in a, in a way that recycles their nutrients back into the soil. So yeah, just trialing a few things and, and getting the feedback from those trials before committing to a, a big scale production is, is a very good idea. It's often um, you kind of think of what would work well and, and you think, great, let's go for it and you can get unstuck later on down the road because you haven't um, really tried, given it real life um, practice and, and trial.